The sign-up sheet for First Friday Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is available in the cathedral's entrance vestibule. Please note that there is no 8 a.m. Mass on this Friday, August 4th. As a kind reminder, we ask that you turn your cell phones to silent. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The processional hymn is number 319, Praise to the Lord, number 319. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. When you pray to God, what is it that you ask of him? Do you ask for good things for yourself? Good things for others? For good weather? For good health? Maybe to win the lottery? Or a new car? Imagine God appearing to you in a dream and promising to grant you whatever you ask for in prayer. What would you say? This is precisely what happened to King Solomon in the first reading today. God appeared to him in a dream and told him that he would grant to him whatever he asked for in prayer. 
But Solomon did not ask for a long life. He did not ask for wealth, nor did he ask for the death of his enemies. Instead, he said to God, Give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. Give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. Anything could have been given to King Solomon, and this is what he asked for. He prays for an understanding heart. What does that even mean? Well, the heart in the scriptures refers not to a, a part of the body, but is the center of the person the place of one's intentions and opinions. In some way, it is maybe what we call nowadays the conscience. King Solomon prayed for a conscience that knows how to listen, that is sensitive to the voice of the truth, and for this reason can discern right from wrong. Maybe for us, this is not the first thing we think of to ask God in prayer. In fact, I think that there are people who try to use their, use their consciences as an escape from what is right. But our conscience, our, our very center of ourselves, our, our very being, our, our heart, is meant to bring us actually in line with God's truth. And it does if we form it correctly. If we ask God to give us this grace and then we are willing to cooperate with this grace. But it's so important, really crucial to our existence and our purpose. In order for us to live, to truly live and be in tune with God, we must have a moral conscience, an upright heart, an understanding heart, free from those things that corrupt our lives. This is the most important thing we can ask of God. Really, it is trivial for us to ask God for favorable things or conditions when our true quality of life depends on having an upright conscience, an understanding heart. To recognize what is right and to separate it from wrong and to seek to patiently put it into practice is most important in life because it will determine our eternal life. I think our, our bishop has demonstrated in a way this importance through his Episcopal motto. It is taken from Psalm 51, and Bishop Cahill's Episcopal motto is this, create a clean heart in me, O God. I think I remember the bishop mentioning that this motto was chosen not just for him, uh, but is a, a prayer a desire for the whole diocese, for all of you here in the, these pews, uh, for all those watching uh, this Mass, 
uh, by means of television and, and the internet for all of us, all the priests, everyone in this diocese, that, that truly this may be our prayer. Create a clean heart in me, O God. And I find it very striking that this is very similar. You know, how similar this is to the prayer, to the desire of King Solomon. Give me an understanding heart. May our desire match that desire of King Solomon, whose request pleased God so much that he was given a superabundance of this grace. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Father of all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, true God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, who came down from heaven, who by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the day, the life of the world to come. With hearts and minds, turn to the Lord. Let us now offer to him our prayers and petitions. For the universal church, may she continue to seek God's greatest treasures in the poor, the humble, and the outcast of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the leaders of our nation, May they govern with wisdom as they seek to serve the needs of those entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord For police, firefighters, emergency med medical technicians, and all first responders, may God bless them for risking their lives and welfare to serve and protect us. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all those seeking to learn the commandments of God and for those inquiring about our faith, may they learn of God's great love through our example. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the family of Kenneth Dietzel, may they be consoled in their grief by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithfully departed and for the parishioners and benefactors of our parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, graciously hear these our prayers and grant them according to your divine will through Christ our Lord. 
The hymn for the presentations of the gifts is number 262, Set Your Heart on the Higher Gifts, number 262. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up. 
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my
The communion hymn is number 288, Make of Our Hands a Throne, number 288.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 281, Sing Ave, number 281.